Welcome back everybody! Cheapo time in the Cheapo Nation. And today we have something a little different in the hot seat. We got the doctor in the house. It's the doctor meter MS88 for your Cheapo pleasure. Let's take a look. Big shout out to Michael Yamarino, subscriber on the channel and generous guy. He sent in the MS88 for this review. In the box, you get your standard set of test leads. Uh, these are really generic in nature. Uh, a lot of OEMs use the same test lead. Cat 2 1000 volt, uh, adding rich meters, you name it. Uh, these are basically everywhere. But hey, they're free. And look at this. No, it's not a doohickey. This is actually a transistor tester because yeah, you can do HFE testing with the doctor. Oh, groovy. So while you get a doctor meter, you the manual itself, you've got some pretty neat little uh, graphics here, nice schematic of the layout of the multimeter, uh, the ins and outs, what have you. So all in all, pretty decent little meter manual. Quite a few different incarnations of this meter. You'll see it as branded as the Tech Power amongst others. The MS8268, I believe, is the uh, name of the meter from Tech Power. Identical, completely identical, exact same, just a different brand. First impressions of the meter, hey, you know what? It feels really, really nice. Um, this to me looks like what a multimeter should look like. Yes, maybe it's a little conservative per se in overall looks, but I freaking love it. This is the way I like my multimeters to look. Yeah, really good solid build quality here. Nothing at all squeaky, contiki. Um, this just has a nice solid build. Of course, the boot does come off, so you can undress your doctor when nobody's looking. Oh, get your mind out of the gutter. And Dr. Meter was generous to give us a really big kickstand. Look at that sucker. That is huge and uh, really easy to pull out of its little hidden housing there. But that is a nice big kickstand. So you can really, really one hand this without any issues whatsoever. Of course, in the back meter, you do have that nice little uh, test lead housing so you can store them like so. You can one hand it if you're probing and testing at the same time. A uh, really nice little feature. The MS-88 is powered by one 9-volt battery. Simple access to the housing via one Phillips screw, which has a nice brass threaded insert. Unfortunately, we do not have fuse access. Too bad. Let's take a look at the selector switch starting at the 9 o'clock or off position. Volts DC up to 1,000 volts. Volts AC up to 750 volts. Non-contact voltage. Resistance, continuity, diode, and capacitance. Frequency up to 10 megahertz. HFE transistor test. Microamps, ACDC. Milliamps, ACDC. Finally, high current amps, ACDC. At the top of the multimeter, we have our range button, followed by the RAL. Hold, and finally, frequency and duty cycle. Below that, we have our one touch backlight and the green function selector. Bottom of the meter, we have our high current input for 20 amps, and apparently it has a 20 amp, 250 volt fuse. Below that, we have our HFE microamp and milliamp. On the right hand side, we have our common neutral or ground. And finally, at the top right, we have our voltage, resistance, capacitance, diode, frequency, and duty cycle. So quite a few little features on this multimeter. Now it's 4,000 count, so you know, it's not the uh, highest resolution out there, but hey, feature and functionality wise, it seems to offer quite and a turning lot. on that display, we are greeted with a pretty nice, clear, crisp uh, font. Um, I like it, I like it a lot actually. Uh, easy on the eyes and overall nice and clean. We can invoke that backlight and look at that, it gets even better here. Now we have a battery indicator, here, which means the battery that's inside is probably in due for a change, but uh, hey, that's okay. All in all, looking really nice. Now in terms of readability, you don't lose much in terms of contrast, no matter what the viewing angle is. So uh, yeah, overall easy on the eyes. And yes, as usual, backlight stays on for about 20 seconds. Ugh. Also the meter, we do have that IEC 61010-1 safety certification. So it is telling us that this does meet some basic multimeter criteria in terms of safety standards. Not a bad thing. 4.99 volts, oh, almost five. 4.99, hey. Not bad, 5.00 is what we wanted, but hey, it's awfully close, well within spec. All right, quick DC accuracy test. On the far left, we have, well, a new favorite of mine, the Klein Tools MM600, middle of the start of the show, the MS88. And on the far right, we have a UT181A, 60,000 counts, resolution goodness, and starting off at 1.00 volts, according to the DC power supply. Look at that, 1.009 for the Klein, 1.009 for the doctor and 1.0099 for the unity awesome total agreement across the board up and away here we go let's take it up to a whopping oh 
2 volts according to DC power supply. 10.002, 10.0. 1, 2, pretty close, and 10.02, wow, we have got some darn accurate multimeters here, alrighty, up and away, you know what, let's just max it out, quick and painless, 32.0, 1 volt, according to DC power supply, 32.02 for the climb, 32.00 with that high voltage indicator on the unity, and 31.97 for the doctor, good stuff, wow, all pretty accurate multimeters, and, uh, <laughs> whoa, once again, I think Klein, Klein took this one away, but I think Unity was actually right there with them, so good okay. job. DC amps, 4.04, according to the Kiwis, and let's just take it up a notch, shall we? It's going to max it right out, right to 10.31 volts. Coming up is 10.22 for the doctor, and we are getting that high current alarm, high current alarm, when we hit over 10 amps. Now, once again, this is good for 20 amps. Uh, we're not going to go that high today, unfortunately, but... Uh, there you go. Welcome back to another edition of Multimeter Vent of the Week. This week's vent, oh, you know it's so true. Multimeters that have rotary selector switches that are impossible to read. Black on white, yeah, that works. Red on black, are you kidding me? Is it just me or did somebody not get the yeah, memo? looks good, doesn't it? The white, it's so contrasty and clean. The yellow, oh, now you're talking. But man, look at the red, look at the red. What is that? What is it? Ah, it's all about safety. At the end of the day, if you can't read your selector switch dial, then there is a problem. Without standards or confirmations for these OEMs to adhere to, it's really impossible to come up with any safety. Now and then, though, here comes a multimeter, and whoa, they were thinking out of the box. It seems to, when things get smaller, they get harder and harder to read. That's normal, so make the font cleaner. Already resistance mode. Here we go with the resistance decade box. Let's think of one mega ohm coming up as 1.003. Nice. Let's try three mega ohm. Three it is. Six. And it's getting there. Oh, it is a little bit slow to range in resistance mode. Let's try 10 mega ohm. Yeah, that is really slow. It's accurate, but it is freaking slow. Let's try 100K. 101. Let's try 300K. 600 and one omega ohm yeah so ah uh, it is accurate but it is slow all right it's diode time here we go starting off with red led light emitting diode let's get it on the right oh and we're not oh we are what the hell that's that's wrong that's just wrong oh my goodness Wow, okay, red is nothing, no illumination, no forward voltage drop, and same for the yellow. And the white, nada. Pinata, blue, oh, ho, ho, mother have mercy. Doctor. Oh, for doctor. Oh, good God, that's really bad. Okay, let's just try a standard LED, uh, diode rather. And yeah, no problem there. We don't get an audible beep, but at least we're getting that forward voltage drop. But yeah, that's it. So uh, if you're into LEDs of any sort, <laughs> the, the doctor has left the house. Hey, it's continuity time. One of my favorite times. I just love hearing these little guys whine. Here we go. Three, two, one. Hey, not shabby. Default leads. You know, I honestly wasn't expecting too much with these test leads, but yeah, continuity wise, latched. Fairly loud. Not too bad. Let's start the Pro Masters. Masters. Wow, really not much difference here at all. Man, these things cost more than the multimeter itself. 77.8 decibels, maximum output volume in continuity. Well, don't even get me started about capacitance. Yeah, because this meter is a total fail. 200 microfarad, that's it, that's all. That is the maximum. So even a mm. pathetic, small 560 microfarad capacitor is too much for the doctor. Ugh. AC volts now coming up, 115.9 volts AC. Now this is not a true RMS meter as well, non-true RMS. So that is not a total indication of what that sine wave has given us. Uh, we can hit our Hertz and duty cycle. We get a 60 uh, Hertz and 49.2% duty cycle. So a uh, pretty handy feature to have. I like it when we have it all with the touch of a button. But uh, yeah, 150.8, that is definitely a little bit on the low side. Now 116.4, okay, well, there you go. All right, now we are in NCV mode. Look at this, 
That's a really sensitive sensor. Oh, can see that three times fast. Sensitive sensor, sensor. No, I can't. But wow, awesome. And it doesn't matter where you are on that uh, meter. It's sensitive all the way around, so. And here we are at the light switch as well. Good stuff. Already it's teardown time and oh, do my eyes deceive me. Look at that on the reverse side of the meter. You guessed it, we have shielding. Oh, beautiful, leave it to the good doctor to have protective multimeter. Yeah, mm, excellent. So, booyah. And that is a bonus one star just for having shielding. Start off with those input jacks. They are the split variety, double-sided. Um, they are in there with some fairly decent little solder blobs. Um, they look okay, probably not the greatest out there, but you know what? Eh. I think they will be just fine. Uh, there is our current shunt with another big massive solder blob and one, two PTCs as well. Directly above, we have the two ceramic fuses. These are six by 30 millimeter fuses. Um, now, the funny thing is they do not indicate which is which. Alrighty, so there's the high current fuse right here. And I don't know why they're not labeling that. It's a little weird, but uh, anyway. Yeah, and as you can see, they are 20 amp, 250 volts, so they are true to the rating. Another bonus, a good stuff, a doctor, for at least giving us a real indication of what you're putting in for a fuse rating. Good stuff. Over here on the other side, we have our 400 milliamp, 6x30 fuse as well on the milliamp side. Yeah, that's it. That's all. Quite an interesting little, uh, I don't know what you want to call that casement for those fuses so instead of being directly on the pcb they are actually above the pcb for uh, i'm not sure for whatever reason the engineers thought that that would be a good idea now moving up to the top things get even more interesting uh well let's get the obvious out of the way there's the buzzer piezo um but over here the main ic is cobbed uh there is a, a hex inverter that's a phillips i believe uh HEX 4069. And directly above him, we have the Texas Instruments TL062CP. That is a low power JFET input op amp. But wow, look at this. There you go. That is the reason we have such incredibly good NCV on this multimeter. Look at that metal filament, almost the entire width of the meter, but at least in the dead center and both sides um, where it counts most. So excellent, excellent stuff. That is what is giving us that really, really good NCV. And here, that spring is for the ground, makes contact with the uh, shielding on the opposite side. Wow, I can't believe it. Shielding, mama! Come to Pumas 88, as you can see, revision 1.2, a fab date of March 27th, 2015. But like I said, these are still being built today, so uh, still pretty relative in the scheme of things. And if you do look over here, looks like we have a VR1, so we do have a trim pot. I'm not sure if that is for the voltage, probably is, but uh, we do have a little bit of self-calibration if the need arises. Yeah. We have a really, really nice housing. This is something you normally see on much more expensive multimeters, so that uh, rotary selector switch is actually embedded in this casing over here. So uh, very nice. So is the LCD. Now, we do have a lot of flux on those input jacks, but that being said, they are blobbed nicely with solder. Nice and nice clean job. So uh, yeah, too bad they just didn't clean that up a little bit better, but overall uh, good soldering. Here we are taking it out even further. Here's the track pads on that selector switch. And once again, that housing is still covered and sealed. So, I mean, in terms of overall long wear and longevity, that really should be a, a good thing. Uh, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight track pads all together. And those are making contact with, of course, the rotary selector tracks themselves. And are they greased? No, no grease, no dielectric on here whatsoever. Um, I'll probably put some on before I close it back up. But uh, yeah, there I have a pretty good look at the motherboard, the motherboard, the main board of multimeter itself. The top here, we have the um, circuit that makes contact with that zebra strip over here. That's what feeds the display itself. All in all though, quite a nice assembly on the internals. Um, a little messy in some parts, a lot of flux residue floating around, but generally speaking, um, yeah, I like what I see. And I just applied a little bit of that dielectric grease to the rotary selector tracks and I just feed it in with your finger like so. And that's it. Makes better contact. Uh, 
promotes better wear and tear over the long run, and uh, you know, it's always a good idea. All right, gonna put everything back together. Come back with my closing thoughts. Closing thoughts on the Dr. Meter MS88. Well, I gotta say, it's actually better than I originally suspected. So certainly this meter's built pretty well. Yeah, a little messy, but they paid attention to some of the things that are important, like the shielding. Whoa, go figure. And um, it has a true rated 20 amp fuse. Yeah, it's only 250 volt, but at least the current rating is correct. Yeah, really pathetic capacitance range of only 200 microfarad, which in this day and age is just way too low, baby. And that meager LED dial, oh, performance-wise, it just doesn't get any worse than that. That was a complete bust. Yeah. This still is a pretty decent multimeter. Now, if you can find it at a good price, I've seen the price all over the place for this, anywhere from about 35 bucks uh, US to around 60 to 70. So the price is off the charts exponentially, depending where and when you find it. But that being said, if you're looking for a good basic multimeter to have around the house or on the bench, and you don't require a lot of LED or capacitance testing, you might want to put the doctor on your short list. The doctor meter MS88 gets, and don't forget one extra star because it's got shielding, a solid three out of five stars. Hey, thanks again for sending this one in, Michael Yamarino. And thanks for and watching. Starting next month, we're going to have something called Vintage Tech starting up on the channel. Going to be embedding a pretty cool little three or four minute um, review of an old but a goodie. And we're talking multimeters here. Hey, thanks for watching, everybody. To the next one, keep on testing.